Hi everybody, in this video we are going to use the line data structure to iterate through sections of sample slices. In a previous video I went over the introduction to the line data structure, so I recommend you check that one out if you're not familiar with the line data structure, as this is going to have some assumed knowledge of how that works, but I will give a brief introduction to that as we jump in here. So we have a sample, and the sample is called Chuck, and this is the great Chuck D of Public Enemy, counting to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm using the sample because it's very easy to know where you're at in the sample at any point, and that's gonna be important since we're gonna be chopping up the sample into sections and starting at different points. So this will just give you a clear idea of where we're at in the sample so you can better understand what's going on with uh, how we're using this data structure. Okay, um, so I'm gonna create a live loop called line chop. And in there, we're going to need our sample, but also uh, we are going to need to create some variables. Now, we're going to be chopping up this sample using the slice and num slices options of the sample function. If you're not familiar with those, you can check them out uh, in the sample part of the documentation. So if you go down here, there's slices and slice. Uh, I also did a video tutorial about those. I'll link that up there and you can check that out as well if you're not familiar with how to chop up samples in that way. So I'm gonna create a couple of variables here. The first one we're gonna call start slice. And we're just gonna start that at zero. Okay, and then I'm going to create another variable called num uh, slices, and that is going to be, actually now that I'm thinking about it, this might be uh, troublesome because there, the option we're going to use is called num slices, so maybe we'll just call this num slice, I believe that should work, and we will start with 8. And then I'm just going to make a variable called L, and that is going to be to store my line data structure. Now, the line data structure, we start with line, and then we are going to, I'll jump back into the documentation. So we need to provide at least two arguments, that being a starting number and a finishing number. And what the line data structure will do is it will create an even distribution of values starting at the start number and finishing at the finish number. Uh, and we can determine how many steps we want along the way, which will basically be how many values will it iterate from the start to the finish. So we are going to actually use the variables we just created. So uh, the starting value is going to be start slice. And then the finishing value is going to be start slice plus num slice. So basically we're going to start here and then we're going to end however many away from that. And we are also going to use the steps option here. And that steps option is going to be num slice. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see all this. All right. Um, next, I am going to create a, a dot times do, so a repetition block. And I am going to just use the num slice dot times do and here uh, I think actually I want to do that and so what I'm doing here is we can have like four dot times eight dot times I want to iterate through my line data structure here and since the number of steps 
it corresponds to how many values are in your data structure we're just going to go with this variable i could do like l dot length dot times uh but it's basically going to be the same thing so i'd rather just do that okay um so next i'm going to jump in here with the sample and i'm going to do the num slices so that's why i didn't want to name this num slices because that's going to be used and the number of slices is going to be num slice uh actually you know what we can i'm not going to do that because that is actually going to change so but i will do eight for now i'm not going to use this variable here because uh it's going to be different you'll see why in a little bit and then we are going to do slice now slice is going to be so num slice is saying we're chopping up this chuck sample into this many pieces and slice is which piece do we want to play and what we are going to do is use this line data structure that we made to choose what slice and we're just going to iterate through that slice and then we are going to sleep right now for one okay so just to kind of go over what we did here we have a variable that says what slice we're starting on uh, we then have a variable that says how many slices are we going to have and now we have a line data structure that starts at our starting slice and ends at our ending slice and has that many number of steps and then we're going to iterate through that and here we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What? So there you see I've chopped up this chuck sample where he's going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now we are able to kind of iterate through that, but we can kind of manipulate uh, when each chunk is going to happen. So maybe if I wanted to go a little faster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One. And I could do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two. So this gives us a little bit of control of how we can kind of move through this. Um, now, where this starts to get interesting is we can kind of make it more and more granular and really chop it up and kind of iterate through this sample in a way where uh, we're kind of moving from piece by piece. So now I'm going to change this num slice to 16. So we're chopping up this chuck sample into 16 parts here. And um, I'm also going to change this to 16. Now, as I go through this, I'm going to, for the time being, these numbers are going to be the same, but you'll start to see why uh, we're not necessarily using this same variable for the value of the num slices but so now let's listen to what this sounds like One, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, eight, eight. so now each number that Chuck D is saying has been chopped into two since we have 16 slices instead of eight. Uh, and there we kind of made it last a while, but if we change the sleep value. So you can start to have fun with kind of how you chop these up. So again, maybe now I'll cut it into 32. You'll notice I'm kind of doing multiples of four and eight. Uh, that's mostly because he's counting to eight in this sample. So you could certainly experiment depending on the sample you're trying to use here. So now if I were to do this, so we have 32 slices. So you hear each each number has been chopped into four parts. 
I'm not even gonna bother going through that, but if I speed up. So again, we're just kind of iterating through this chopped up sample. So here's now where I'm gonna break away from having these two values the same. So let's say I only want 16 slices in my line data structure, uh, but the sample itself has been chopped up into 32 parts. So what this is basically saying now is I am only going to iterate through the first half of this sample. There's 32 slices. I've chopped the sample up into 32 slices, but this line data structure where I'm iterating through the slices only goes from 0 to technically 15 because it's not going to end on 16. So I'm kind of like uh, working through the indices of this data structure here. So now we should only hear the chopped up count of one, two, three, four. So this number of slices is how many, how kind of granular we want to cut the actual entire sample up into. But the start slice and the num slice is now you can kind of think of it as where within this 32 do we want to start and stop. So for example, now if I start at 16 and end at 32, I'm only going to hear the 5, 6, 7, 8 part of the overall sample. So five, six, seven, eight. Um, and, you know, I could even, so the number of slices is like how much of the sample I want to iterate through. So I could maybe, if I only did four slices, um, I'm only going to hear one number. And uh, you know, just to kind of make it, if I start at zero, I'm only going to hear one. So then if I start at four, I'll hear two. So again, this is, if we have 32 slices, the start slice is where are we starting in that 32, and then the num slice is how much of that 32 are we gonna iterate through, and that's what's going on here in this line data structure, which can make for some interesting patterns and stuff like that. So again, maybe if I do 16 and I start at 8, I get the 3, 4, 5, 6, and maybe if I want to speak. You know, I don't have to do even number of slices. Maybe I could do like 19. So it doesn't have to be even numbers. And so the beauty of this here is that no matter what number I choose, it's always going to iterate through that many times. So we never have to worry about any dead space or like skipping over something like that. Um, so that is, uh, to me, a very fun way that you can start kind of playing around with the line data structure and chopping up samples and things like that. So one other thing, and also actually two other things, I guess. So one thing is since we're kind of iterating through these chops um, based on our sleep value, not necessarily having anything to do with the duration of the sample itself, we can kind of play around with how fast so we can maybe change the BPM here. Three, four, five, six, seven, three, so that's four. actually getting close to me if I brought it back to two. I'm also going to set this back to 16 just to keep it sort of uh, even. And if I change this to say 110. So the 
the speed at which we're kind of moving through these slices is not dependent on the sample duration in any way. So maybe I'll go back to like 90. So one other little trick uh, I like to do with this is using the R pitch uh, option of the sample duration or the sample function as well. And this is going to increase the rate of the sample, but at a way where um, it's going to correspond with like a change in a MIDI note as opposed to just maybe a percentage, which would happen if we were to use the rate option of the sample function. So what I'm going to do here is actually use a scale data structure, but I'm going to start at zero and then maybe I will just do like a minor scale. And there. So what this is going to do is our pitch just takes a value. So if I were to put one, it would increase it by one half step. If I did two by two half steps. So I'm doing a scale here. It's going to kind of give me the half steps uh, from the root note. But in this case, since it's zero, it's just going to give me those as numbers. Uh, and then I'm just going to do dot choose. And so now, in addition to kind of iterating through. Uh, the slices, they're also going to get different pitches to give it a little bit of a melodic quality as well. So that's one way. If you don't want to do the scale, you could just, you know, if you just want to increase the pitch specifically. And you could do that. You could do, you know, maybe a ring and play around with it a little bit. I'm just going to kind of, I don't know, maybe I'll do like zero and then five and then seven and then uh, nine, let's say, dot tick. Uh, I may need to do a dot look here since I already have a tick. So, uh, and that's something you could definitely play around with more. But uh, that's the basic idea that I wanted to show you here of how we can use this line data structure to kind of iterate through the slices of a sample in a interesting and granular way there. So hope you enjoy that and have a lot of fun with it.